Hello, I'm Kat Curry Williams. And I'm Robin Radin. And this is Wine, Women, and Chocolate. And we are back with Susan Anton. They can't get rid of me. No, we can't, and we don't want to. Because <laughs> she's just as sweet as apple pie. Let's toast to that. All We're right. going to start with the toast. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. To wine, women, and chocolate. Yeah. Mm. In, in that order. Yum, 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 yum. You're drinking some delicious Walt wine. This is a 2020 Pinot Noir. It's called Blue mm. Jay from the Anderson Valley, and it is delicious. It's yummy. Mm. It's we were supposed to be sipping, but I think we, the new term is drinking. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank well, you, you know, Hall. We're, we're told to hydrate. Walk. Yes. It's very important that we stay hydrated mm. these days. Uh, yes. And it's so good. It keeps my, my lips a good color, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's working. That's right. So, of course, this is all apple pie, but mm. someone was telling us about apple pie, and then we couldn't let her go right. to uh, yeah. without that recipe yeah, and without it, some yeah. other ditties about I knew that, I knew that Yeah, I knew the apple pie thing would be a cliffhanger, <laughs> and people would be you know tuning yes. back in, like, I've got to get the recipe. You know, it's Really, it's really apple crisp. It's not even a real pie. It's the easy man, easy man's apple pie. I think I've had it. Flour, brown sugar. With you. You've made yeah, it. Yeah, waiting. It's a lot of butter, brown sugar, sugar, um, uh, nuts, and then you dice up your apples and you pack them in a little pan and then you put all the crumble crumble on top. You stick it in the oven until it turns into like you know applesauce with a crunch, and then you put a little. Ice cream on it and call it a day. All right. Now, I'm going to repeat that. So we cut up and chunk. What kind of apples? Oh, well, you have to use um, uh, uh, Glen Seedling. The, the tart ones. Oh, okay. Because my, my daughter was Granny asking Smith. me that. Is yeah. it Granny Smith? Like that? Yeah. Okay, she was like, Mom, I don't think you use those in apple pies. Well, you're not correct yeah, on that yeah. you t- <laughs> I was Before I was in the Miss California America thing and all of that, I was the Apple Growers Association queen of the apples. Oh. True. All right. So, so you know from your apples. Mess with me on my apples. Hey, do they so, make apple wine? I know that. I think they do. Boone's Farm. <laughs> yes. And hard <laughs> like cider. Strawberry come, wine. Does hard cider come from apples? <laughs> yes. My yeah. grandma. Yeah. My grandfather. Wine, women, made. and hard cider will be our next. Uh, <laughs> Here's to that. <laughs> Here's to that. You know, oh. my grandfather. My grandfather used to make hard cider and back in because he was born in 1900, so he ran a little bootleg whiskey oh. on the side of his apple ranch. He was in everything. That's kind of that's my kind of man. I already <laughs> had too much wine. You know, you know and then, yeah, and then That's one my kind of man like from my, the 1900s. Yeah, like my mom said, you know, we could always tell when Papa was like the apples would be really good, and they'd live in the big house, and then Papa would go gambling, and they'd move into the small house, uh-huh. and then so he was uh, he lived by his that, own rules. The big house started. had a different, uh, different <laughs> he was a connotation back then. Oh, yeah. that's right, the big house. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right. Oh yeah, it had a, yeah. I should say the the mansion, uh-huh. and then. And then the the other, yeah. And, and, and then the, yeah. the shoe. Well, you know, it's funny because yeah. you did a really good <laughs> New York accent. Uh-huh. And so I'm wondering if that maybe came from the time that you were in New York. Uh-huh. Because you are a West Coast girl. I am. But mm-hmm. you spent some time on Broadway. So mm-hmm. can you tell us how you made it from the West Coast to New York City? Yeah, I mean, this it was a real pinch me moment, truly. Um, I think that every actor... and, and you know, especially if you're a singer and you want to be one day on Broadway. I mean, that's just and one of the movies when I was a little girl watching was always the, the Ziegfeld mm. um, things, watching the Ziegfeld Follies and all of that, uh, those big, splashy musical productions. And so, as fate would have it, it was really kind of interesting because Farrah Fawcett, God bless her, she had really um, helped open the door for a lot of us you know, poster girls of the 70s and stuff to be taken more seriously when she did Burning Bad. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. And uh, and she was on Broadway, and people were like, wow. And so uh, Mike Nichols, one of the great directors of all time, mm-hmm. uh, especially in theater, but everything, and he was directing um, a straight-up drama, Hurley Burley. It uh, had won the Pulitzer. It had a star-studded cast, and the, the Darlene character was leaving. And and uh, my agents got wind of that, and uh, I flew to New York to audition. And I'll never forget going to the Barrymore Theater on the afternoon, and I'd memorized my part. And David Rabe does not write with any punctuation whatsoever. It was all run on and a lot of nasty words, mm-hmm. and you know, because mm-hmm. that's what David Rabe does. And, it, and I had no idea 
what it was about. Oh. And I didn't want to go see it the night before because I didn't want to be influenced by, at that time, Candace Bergen's performance. And so uh, I went into the audition, and I sat in one of these chairs like this. Mike Nichols is sitting out right out there, you know, and we had met. And I'm like, this is the biggest deal of my life. Mm -hmm. And I sat down in the chair, and my entire body, you know how when your foot goes to sleep or something, my whole body got to that sensation. Oh I couldn't move. I literally couldn't move if I wanted to. I couldn't lift my arm or my leg or anything because it was all just... In the needles. Frozen. Oh. It was frozen. And uh, I'm doing it, the, the scene with the, the guy that's the understudy for the lead guy, Eddie. And the words are coming out of my mouth at the right time. I have no idea what I'm saying. I have no idea what it's about. My body is just to shut down. And I hear Mike Nichols laughing. And I'm going like, is it funny? Is it, <laughs> is it supposed to be funny? I mean, and he's cracking up. And I'm going like... I don't know if this is any good or not. I was like, I hope this is supposed to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> and then we finish, and Mike jumps up, and he's like, forget about the show. Let's get married. And I'm like, okay. And a few days later, I, I, got, I found out yeah, that. And she was married a few days later. And he was like, uh-oh. I said, and a few okay, days later, I was thing. married. It didn't quite make Mike's memoir, but <laughs> but no. Um, and then a few about a week later, I found out that I, I got the part. And so there wow. I was on Broadway with Mike Nichols as my director in a Pulitzer Prize winning play um, with some of the, the greatest of all time. And, and I adapted quickly to the, the environment because and you're like, see, shit, let me see what this play is about. So, yeah, I better watch. I better figure this. Out. You know what? I bet you everybody that's ever been in that play could still would sit here and tell you, I don't really know. It's about okay. so many things uh -huh. that it's it. But everybody came to see it. Everybody was Elizabeth Taylor and Carol Channing. I mean, everybody came to see Hurley Burley because it was the talk to come and see this. It was like a three hour thing. It was really long. Uh, but what was fun about the Broadway community, and then I'll let you guys talk at some point. Uh, no, that, allows, <laughs> that allows us to drink more wine. Here to you, Rob. Is that, keep this going. I'll, I'll keep going. You girls drink up. Is that uh, on matinee days, home. they mm -hmm. would all meet at uh, be Orso's or Joe Allen, and mm -hmm. that I would... I was always invited, which was really great of them, and sit around these giant tables and all of the different shows, all of these legends of the theater would sit around this table, John Malkovich and, you know, Jessica Tandy and all these people, and I would just sit there and listen to these stories that these people are telling, wow. you know, and we would have our, our, our between show meal and off we'd go so I felt really taken into the community and then the next time I was on Broadway was uh, for the Will Rogers Follies uh, I got to play Z's favorite which was um, Zigfield Follies so back to full circle watching wow. Zigfield Follies on TV wow. you know, and movies talk and about musicals. a vision board yeah yeah <laughs> really you know, this is your world kid yeah man. and there there it was and Everybody came to that, presidents and heads of states, and everybody came to see the Will Rogers Follies, and we got to go to Washington to do the Kennedy Center Honors, and, yeah, you know, fabulous. it was just, so I have a deep place in my heart, and I got to do Hairspray, and I got to do Hairspray at the Hollywood Bowl, um, so, there too. yeah. That yeah. Is, How long so did you great. stay in New York City? For the, her, the Mike Nichols, I was there for a full year, a little mm -hmm. bit more than a year. And then... Um, did you we'll, room with somebody? No, you know, <laughs> Catherine, <laughs> not at this stage. <laughs> no, I actually, um, I got really lucky. You know, I've been blessed my entire life. Uh, I had purchased my home in L.A., and my real estate agent, when found out that I was going, he said, you know, I have a friend who has um, an apartment at the Regency Hotel that he doesn't use all the time. Maybe he'll let you use it. So there I was on Park Avenue at the Regency, at the Hotel, Regency Hotel in a, in a penthouse it. suite free. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Not for, bad. For, not bad. Not bad. For Damn, a year. that was... And then insane. when you did the Follies... Then well, I had to pay for my own hotel. <laughs> I know, but I, I could afford it. it was, oh. you know. So you stayed for how long for that? I was in New York a good five months at that time. Uh -huh. Enough yeah. to pick up a good enough accent that yeah. you can go from here. Well, to there, you know, you know, because you've got all those 
those uh, cab, cab drivers and all those <laughs> yeah. people. And you have all the construction workers at the time. Yo, Sue. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you don't have a problem with that, Robin, right? You like that I accent. I like it. You do Robin well. is from, yeah, Thank you. Well. Robin is from Chappaqua. So she's from New York. Yeah. I'm impressed. Well, yeah. thank you. We um, can and, have a little so, pajama party because you know I like to have pajamas. And get some, just and get some of uh, John's oven baked pizza. Um, oven. An apple pie to top it off. There you oh, go. Good thing that wasn't the wine bottle. And then um, you came back to Los Angeles. Mm, I did. I did because love, love brought me back after the Will Rogers Follies. I had just met my husband, and not mm. yet married, but we had met just before I went to New York to do the Follies. And so it was really a romantic time because he would come to New York to see me, on, and I was up there on the stage, and so it was like, oh, look at my girlfriend. Mm. And, uh, and and he, he he's not a bad looker himself. He's not, I was he, like, look at my guy. Uh, yeah. Touch him, you will not touch him, yeah, only me, right? So it was, yeah, <laughs> you have it, to tell those follies, keep your hands it was, off. Look, was, uh, listen, in the Will Rogers Follies, the whole cast was like these tall, Amazonian, gorgeous girls, because they're the Ziegfeld Follies, for heaven's sakes, and then the chorus boys are the same, so it was the tallest cast, probably, in theater history. <laughs> we were like the Harlem Globetrotters up there. We were just, just legs for days. But it was um, a really romantic time, and, and after that ended, I came home, and um, I don't think it was that long after that that Jeff and I got married and started our journey as mm -hmm. husband and wife. Uh, and then you, you moved to Vegas. Well, you know, it was interesting because I, that's the last place I thought I would ever live. Um, I was lucky enough to have a lot of success in Vegas, played there a lot, a lot, a lot. I worked with all of the, the best that there is and was and headlined and everything. But it's a hard place when you're a young woman on your own. What are you going to do after you get off stage? Right. You know, I would go back to my room and order room service and watch Johnny Carson or whatever was left on television at that hour because you always did a show at 8 midnight. Uh, the band, they had a great time. You know, yeah. but yeah. I'm not going to go hang out and do that right. because I was also pretty known at the time too. I'd been on television quite a bit and so people could recognize me and I, 5'11", I'm not hard to miss. <laughs> mm. um, and so it was kind of, Vegas was kind of, it was a it was a push-pull for me. It was a blessing and hard. Mm -hmm. So it's the last place I thought that we would live. But we, I, after we were married, Jeff and I, I was offered to do the Radio City Music Hall Spectacular with the Rockettes and go on a 72-city tour. And wow. they had never been outside of Radio City at the time. So it was a big deal. And we, as a team, took it on, Jeff and I. And for a year and a half, we traveled all across the United States, and it was incredible. And uh, so then the Flamingo Hotel bought the show, and we thought we would go for one year. But while we were there that first year, um, Jeff, who was an actor and is now a, a director and a producer and, you know, the president of our company, Big Picture Studios, and a writer. Jeff Lester. Lester. Still mm -hmm. handsome as could be. Yeah. <laughs> and so... Jeff to Jeff. Yes. And Jeff. I'm going to drink to Jeff. I, I, I'll Jeff drink to, and I get. Let's, let's drink to Jeff. Let's drink to Jeff. Let's drink to Jeff. Okay, I would, we, I, we can drink to our husbands. That's Scott mm. and Brian. Yes. Okay, we'll drink to them. Drink to our men. <laughs> drink to our men. Man. But um, while we were there that first year, Jeff said, you know what? They need here in Las Vegas, I have a vision that we can open a production studio. And he wanted to move into directing and, you know, where Vegas didn't have that kind of level at that time of production services and directing and all of that. So it was like, instead of coming to L.A. to be one of many, let's mm -hmm. be one of a few. Right. And so we built a production studio, Big Picture Studios, and now we the Big Picture Studios celebrated 25 years. We're 25 They're years. They're talented, wow. gorgeous, and... Successful. That, successful. Well, my husband is a dog on a pant leg. If he has a vision for something, <laughs> Ooh, I like you that. You know, he he doesn't. I never use that expression. A dog on a pant leg. He doesn't. Stealing it. <laughs> yep. Steal, take it. It doesn't. I've learned that if he says, you know, I think that blah blah blah, and that I know now after twenty nine, almost thirty years, I'm just kind of like, okay, when are we going? What are we doing? Because I'm not going to talk him out. He says that you know it's 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 on the way. Yeah, because yeah. yep. he he spends so much time. To use his word, cogitating, <laughs> that you know, to to formulize it in his head, and then when he gets it to a place that he sees it, and he knows it in his gut, and I just like, okay, let's go. 
Well, that's mm-hmm. great. You know, you're a source for each other, which is yeah. um, where... Like you and Scott. Yeah, my husband and I live that for a source. He's scared. He's scared when I have a thought like that because <laughs> he wanted more closet space. Mm-hmm. And then I, I built us a house from scratch. <laughs> and that's the story he says, I don't know, one day I came home and I told her I wanted more closet space. You know, I think I can use a little more closet space. And then we're, the next thing we're, we're like, you got a, house. a new house. A new house, yep. five blocks over. It's like, okay, so he, he watches his... Uh, what he asks for. Be careful see. what you ask for, That's right. right? Yeah, it's true. Uh, so uh, we we can. So these will be nineteen episodes. We're going to go from one <laughs> to the next to the next, and because there's so much more uh, that you um, have been doing and have continued. You know, you you work with philanthropy. I do. You're right. on the board of She Angels Foundation. I am on the board. Yeah. And uh, tell us a little about She Angels Foundation. What well, you, you know, my friend. Our friend, Mm -hmm. um, this one here, um, is magical when it comes to wanting to be a a, a great source of service to other people and provide for other people, whether it's just as a friend or if it's for people that are out there that need a hand up and an opportunity to shine. Uh, Catherine loves to put the spotlight on others all the time. And so the She Angels Foundation, she, well, of course, you did Shane's Inspiration, which created uh, inclusive playgrounds around the world Mm -hmm. um, uh, from a very personal story that she and Scott went through. And so in looking for her next calling, it was like, Women need to get supported with their endeavors, these nonprofit organizations that are out there doing everything they can with their limited resources to help other women in need or or children. And so She Angels was born, and I'm not going to do it justice to describe uh, the, uh, the number of grants that you've given in we've given less than a year. We've given membership right. organization. Which makes that, it unique. Which, which does. And you could speak to that as well because Robin's the president yeah. of the advisory board. You and, guys can uh, speak to this better than I can. But having women yeah. together like this that we mm-hmm. know and, and including you doing things for other women that raises all of yeah. our... Um, because women funded... Uh, sorry, women founded... Uh, startups get what one point seven percent of um, right. nonprofits. Yeah, women, women founded and operated the, going to girls and including women's causes. Planned Parenthood. Yeah, get less than two percent of all yeah. of the money that is donated um, nationwide, and it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous, especially when you include. Planned Parenthood, which you would think, right. you know, gets so much funding, but it's right. such a tiny piece of the pie. And so when, you know, Catherine came along and said, hey, you know, I'm starting a foundation where we're raising money for women-founded nonprofits to help them, you know, either get off the ground or give right. them that extra push um, to to get someplace that they need to get to, I was like, sign me up. Yep. Yeah. And, and it's just been growing and growing because yes. we have some susan has we do events that are membership right. and they're free for everyone mm-hmm. we don't we only ask for membership money once a year right. and we like to drink wine it's a, yes. <laughs> and but you know for at all those the salons we have salons that's and right. salon, salon hello we have uh, so, no salons wine women mm-hmm. and chocolate fall or saloons. right or saloons <laughs> we fall right into that because we have so many great salons women saloons. that's right <laughs> might get a few more subscribers okay yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I will drink to that. <laughs> and we've given um, to date fourteen, fourteen um, grants, grants, and we've only been in for sixteen little over months. Year. Yeah, yeah. A little over and year. so this the, from January to we'll have given another. And you launched in the middle grants. of a pandemic, and the launching in, in the <laughs> yeah. middle of a pandemic, yeah. where we all, and that is back to the cause of. When you want it, what's your impact in life? Like you've done so much, and you've always been so passionate for helping others. Didn't only have to be women, but now we talk about you're a woman of people are looking at you and looking for advice and and sharing mm-hmm. some of your great quotes. What's your hmm. what's the greatest quote that I love that you say? Oh well, you know the one the one that re- I got from A Course in Miracles, which I know we both I love, or maybe we all do. But um, the gifts you are receiving are greater than the gifts that you are asking for. It's just if you start if you really marinate on that, the gifts you are receiving 
are greater than the gifts that you are asking for because we don't know how to ask big enough. And even if that gift at the time, Mm -hmm. maybe that gift is a heartbreak. Maybe that gift is somebody, maybe the answer is no. Maybe, but if you look at that, uh, this is a gift that I'm receiving. And if I trust that this gift is greater than my limited vision could even begin to think, and I trust this gift, let's see where it takes me. And nine times out of 10, if not 10 out of 10, if I look back on my journey, I can see where the gifts took me to the next gift and the next gift and things that I would have missed had I gotten what I asked for. Because what I asked for wasn't in my best interest or it was too small. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. you have to say this or something greater. Something greater. Um, and, yeah. and, 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 you know, that's where in vision boards and things like that, mm-hmm. people, you know, oh, I just want this. It's like this or something greater, being open to mm-hmm. allow whatever comes in. This podcast came from a gift that Robin and I didn't know was a gift at the time on another uh, project there we were go. working on. That's right. I um, mean, and it didn't look like a gift. Right. That's what you're saying. At the and time. S- at the time. And right. so... Um, at the time, it looked like a big disappointment. Yes. Right? And then it ended up manifesting itself right. into yep. a podcast yeah. for you. And, yep. and for... Which is... For, a, we, and we it's wanna, unnatural for her. Well, you know, for me, it's about bringing our friendships together, bringing our skill sets together, mm-hmm. sharing what we can, and having fun. Because yes. there's a lot of serious stuff that we all mm-hmm. do and we have to do and we you know, may not want to do, but we do. And, um, and drinking wine. Drinking you wine. Know, I thought it was a really good hobby to have. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, my God, so did there you go. Uh, so many women in my... Uh, and you have one more <laughs> quote that I wanted to hear ah, about. Well, yes. this is, you know, and both of them, what I love about both of them is it takes the victim out of it. I think the one thing that if I would just ask everybody in the world to give up, one thing, give up being a victim. Really mm. give up being a victim because you have the power to change your thoughts. Your situation might be hard, but don't be a victim. And so one of my favorite quotes is, "If you do you choose the problem or do you choose the answer? Because the minute you choose the answer, there is no problem. They cannot coexist. So anytime you find yourself go, oh, I really have a problem. You go, okay, do you want to keep talking about your problem or do you want to find an answer? Because if you want to find an answer, they are there. If you want, an, if you want to find a grant for your nonprofit, she angels is there. If you want to find, you know, somebody you to, to help produce your yeah, but somebody yeah, to you produce to your active. podcast, somebody's there. Mm-hmm. The answers are all around us. We just have to receive them, believe in them, mm-hmm. and choose the answer, and not get stuck in our little victim problem. Look for them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so I it's all there. It's it's uh, it's a huge um, lesson, and a, you know, I know sometimes you need to wallow in the time. I see that you have is, to feel it. You have that, yeah. and you have your little boat. I'm a visual. You have your little boat. It's yeah. going. It's going, and then it goes to the side, and either it's going to plunge and completely capsize, or you go to the side. You go to the side, and then you. Grab the rails because there's the desire yeah. to find the answer, and then you write it again. And then you're back on your course, and it doesn't mean that you won't veer a little again. But sure. the more We're human. Can, it's going to happen. Right, the we're more in, you a, can we're write in a crazy it. thing called life. You know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and, and I'll drink to and that. I'll drink to that. I'll toast to uh, life in. Um, Here's to that. In, in here in New York, in LA, yes, ladies. And, uh, solving all around. And um, so this is our cue to say we'll see you next time. And Yes, join us for our next episode, and we will see you then. Bye, Bye everyone. 1016 Entertainment.